Hey guys, welcome back with a, uh, another problem solving practice day with Captain Hook. Uh, today we're gonna deal with a four part problem. It's gonna take us a little while, um, but just like always, the problem itself you can see below this video if you can't see it here very well on the screen. Um, we got a swimmer trying to cross a river. The uh, river's 100 meters wide, and 50 meters down from where the river is at, a dangerous waterfall is threatening to drown any suspecting swimmers. A uh, swimmer can speed at a max speed of about one meters per second, relative to the water, and the current pushes him towards the waterfall at a speed uh, we'll find out later. All right, so our first part uh, says the swimmer starts out aiming himself straight for the other shore. How long will it take him to reach that shore? Now, just like any other problem, this is a good one to draw a picture. So I actually created one already, just to save us a little bit of time today. We got our swimmer. Uh, we know 50 meters down is our waterfall. I call it the waterfall of doom. And he has to go 100 meters across. Okay. So we want to know how long it's going to take. So the next thing we have to do after we have our picture is usually make some kind of chart that can help us out. So in this case, we have two directions of motion. We have what I'm going to call the X direction uh, going straight across, and we have the Y direction going down towards the waterfall. Now, if you don't remember, those directions don't really affect each other at all, other than the fact that the time we find for one might be useful in another. So again, we're going to start out with a chart. So start chart here we're kind of going to call it the across direction which is our X in meters and then we're gonna go our uh, down direction which is towards our waterfall uh, we'll call it Y as also in meters and then we may have to deal with a third one a diagonal direction which is a combination and we'll get to that when we need to okay, so we got our chart started first well what do we know we know we need our position so our displacement our change in displacement our velocity in that direction and our change in time so if we're looking at this first one we know he's got to go 100 meters we know he can only go one meters per second so this is the first one where he's going straight across and we need to figure out what that time is that's what we're sort of looking for right here okay so this is a, uh, we'll bring this chart back up here in a little bit. But this is a pretty simple equation. Um, we've used before that velocity equals displacement over time. So if we're looking for time, we're just gonna cross multiply, do a little bit of algebra. This is part one. So we know that time is distance over velocity. Yeah. So our displacement in this case is 100 meters and our velocity of maximum is one meters per second. So if we actually divide that out, it seems pretty easy. We're gonna get 100 seconds for him to get across the river if he's swimming straight with no current at all. Okay. Okay. Our next problem. So he's still gonna aim straight from the other shore, straight across, and we wanna know how fast the current can be if he wants to survive this swim. So if we look at our picture again, that basically means if he's gonna angle straight across this way at his one meters per second, uh, the current's going to be pulling him down that way. So that's the velocity of the current. It wants to know how fast that current can be for him to basically just reach 50 meters but not fall over it in that same amount of time. Okay? So if we bring our table or our chart back here, we just said that we knew it was 100 seconds. So it was 100 seconds here for him to get across. That's the time we have here. But we also know that it's not 100 meters, it's 50. From where he's at to where that waterfall is. So again, this time we're looking for that velocity of the current to pull him straight down. Okay, so we're actually going to use the same equation we used before. So our velocity equals distance over time, but this time we're looking for velocity. So for part two, we're gonna put that equation back out there again. Again, this time it's in the y direction or up and down towards the waterfall. Our displacement is going to be 50 meters instead of our 100 meters. And our time is the same time, so 100 seconds. So if we do that, we're going to get that it's got to be going at 0 0.5 meters per second or less, preferably a little bit less because you don't want to cut it right to the end. So again, there's our second part. Our third part, let me get this out of the way real quick is stating that as views from the shore, what is the total speed of the swimmer? So if he's going 
one meters per second across and 0.5 meters per second down, it wants to know what the total speed of him is. Okay. All right, so this is where we're going to go with a little bit of vector addition. All right, so we're going to draw a couple vectors. Again, if we look back at our original picture, we know he's going one meter per second this way, and now we know 0 0.5 meters per second down. Okay, so we need to add these two things. They're vectors because they have a magnitude and a direction, both of them. Magnitude for this one straight across, magnitude for that one straight down, and obviously our magnitudes are 1 and 0.5 uh, respectively. So we're going to just sort of add those vectors together. So if we go back and we do this is the swimmer, the velocity of a swimmer, we know it's one meters per second. And we know our velocity due to the water, we'll call it V water, is 0 0.5 meters per second. Well, if we go back to ve vector addition, we have to do the, the head to tail. So this is our total velocity, okay? Now, if you guys haven't done Pythagorean theory in a while, a squared plus b squared is c squared, where c squared is our hypotenuse, which is what we're looking at right now. So our v total is just going to be the swimmer's velocity squared plus the water velocity squared, and then square root the whole thing, okay? So we plug that in, v total is just one meters per second quantity squared plus 0 0.5, which comes from our water. And then we square root that. And if we plug that into our calculator and do a little bit of rounding, our V total is going to be just about 1.1 meters per second. That's what it's going to look like he's moving. So again, this was part three. Okay. Right. So part four going to look a little bit different. Uh, we know that the actual current for the river, this is where they actually give us that, is 0.8 meters per second, which if we remember point, anything bigger than 0.5, he's not going to survive. So it's too strong for him to make it to the other shore if he just uh, swims straight across. So he changes his strategy a little bit and decides to swim at an angle. So the part of his effort cancels the current. So he's sort of going to be swimming up to cancel out the current of going down. As a result, he moves straight across the river towards the other shore. So the two together gives him a straight across velocity. Um, wants to know how long it's gonna take him now. So if we go back to our original picture, over here, our actual V current is not 0.5. It's actually 0 0.8 meters per second. So he needs to cancel that out. So what actually he needs to do, if we're looking at just the swimmer's velocity, he needs to swim sort of up at a diagonal. Now we know that his total is one meters per second and his velocity upwards has to cancel out the velocity of the current. So his actual velocity upwards has to be 0 0.8 meters per second to cancel those out. Right. So we want to know how fast he's actually first going straight across. So I'll call it V across. Okay. Again, we're going to, so we're looking at that. We're going to have to solve, again, same idea as last time. So in this case, we have the 1.0 meters per second quantity squared equals 0 0.8 meters per second quantity squared. Again, that's the cancellation, how much he's going up, plus the speed or the velocity he's going across. Okay. So we gotta solve for that. We'll do that, we're gonna have to subtract the 0.8 to the other side, and then take the square root. So if we do a little bit of algebra, V across equals 1.0 meters per second quantity squared minus 0 0.8 meters per second quantity squared. And we take the square root of that, and that's going to give us a velocity of about 0.6 meters per second. So that's actually how far she's going across, 0 0.6 meters per second. Okay. So that's not our answer, though. If you remember looking back at the problem, which is good to do every once in a while, we want to know how long it's going to take him. So again, if we use our equation one more time, where velocity equals displacement over time, and again, we solve for time, we get time equals displacement over velocity. Well, our original displacement was the 100 meters, which is what we're looking, about, looking for, over our 0 0.6 meters per second, 
Therefore, it's going to give us a time of approximately 167 seconds. So it might take him a little bit longer, but at least he's going to survive. At least he doesn't have to worry about the waterfall.